Hello, welcome to another scrapbooking process video. I'm Tracy, also known as Mercy Tiara, and I make scrapbooking process videos and more here on my channel. Today, I am creating a page with a photo that I actually found on the internet, but it just captured my undergraduate experience so much that I just had to print it up and do a layout. It just reminded me of a story that I really wanted to tell. I didn't know I wanted to tell it until I saw the photo. Leave me a comment below if that ever happens to you where you're just kind of like, oh yeah, I've got a, I have a story to tell. So I am looking through the Celebrate kit to start with, and I'm going to be drawing from my from my stash, my old kit stash, so other Mercy Tiara kits, as well as the Celebrate kit. And as you can see, I have a large scrap of the white glitter cardstock here that I'm using. And I'm also looking through some of the other scraps that I have left over from some of my other pages that I've made already with this kit. Now I am making a real time process video at the same time with the exact same footage. So there's a little bit of talking that you might see in this one, but I'll edit it out as I go. Now here's a scrap. Ooh, I love that. And that is left over from, I think my last layout or the layout before that. And I thought when I cut that paper, I've got to use the other half of it. So maybe it'll get on this page. I also want you to make sure that you stay till the very, very end because this process video is going to show the page uh, in its entirety but then at the very end when the camera wasn't rolling I came back and looked at it and realized that it was missing a few things and I want to talk to you about what it was missing and why and I'll do that when I come to the very very end with the photos. So this paper is really speaking to me this floral green paper and then this other stripey green paper is also really speaking to me and then I also cut the designer strip off because I feel like that designer strip really adds a lot of boldness and I'm looking for a bit of boldness with this page Ooh, speaking of boldness maybe I can use this I'm gonna try so my first thought is maybe this would be a monochromatic page where almost all of my papers and embellishments and whatnot will be that minty, greeny, turquoisey color. So I'm picking out a few other things that have that color that also fit with the vibe that I'm going with. <clears throat> and I'm also going to grab some black cardstock because I'm thinking, especially when I use a monochromatic color scheme, which I don't end up doing, but uh, at this point I thought I was, it's nice to have some boldness. And again, this, this designer strip that I'm cutting off adds some boldness with its bright stripe, but black also really adds some boldness as well. So I'll be doing that. I'm going to gut this background paper so that I can use some of this beautiful pattern someplace else on this page or on another page. I also really like the back side of that, which is those four by six and three by four cut aparts. So now I would like to have a that floral border around the outside edge. So I'm gonna mat my photo, but not my photo, but my, my page. But I want the matting to be quite a bit bigger than it usually is because there's also going to be a black mat around the outside edge of this paper. Now the black matting, I want it to be very, very thin. You don't need very much for it to make impact. So I'm going to mat this like this. Ah, I really like that. Now I could have gutted that black cardstock as well, but I decided not to. I have plenty of black cardstock, so I just decided it wasn't worth it. <clears throat> so I'm going to trim this down with my trimmer, which is super easy to do because you can see with that kind of a rotary tr blade trimmer, it's really easy to see where you're going to cut. So I like using that trimmer in particular when I'm matting things because I can see exactly how much of a mat I'm going to have. So I think I'm standing up at this point to try to put this on straight and I'm not sure. Did, is that straight? I can't quite tell. I think I'm going to leave it, but I might change it at some point. <clears throat> I'm going to mat the photo as well. 
And again, this isn't my photo, but it is of my city, and it's actually very close to where I used to live, which is also really close to where my daughter now lives. And that's part of the story that I'm going to be telling, is here's this wintry street that reminds me of going to do my undergraduate degree, and uh, Liv doesn't live too far from here, from there, and she's living a similar life to the one that I lived. <clears throat> so it's kind of I don't know. That just seems very strange to me. It's strange when your kids grow up and start doing adult things. I don't know. It's a little disorienting. So as much as, I mean, that was a very weird piece of, weirdly shaped piece of glitter paper there. And I wanted it to be more of a right angle. So I just tore it so that it would have a little bit more of a, of a right angle. And I really like the torn edges on that. It looks nice and just a little tiny bit of that sparkle showing supports the idea of snow in the city <clears throat> and I'm going to do a few different things to reflect that idea of snow and here I am thinking whoa maybe maybe I isn't this an interesting shape for paper but I didn't want all that orange on it and at this point, I'm thinking, well, I guess we're not necessarily doing the monochromatic thing. But even without it being monochromatic, it still has some colors on there that I'm not in love with. So see those? There's that orange again and a lighter pink. And I just want this to be more of the blues and greens. So I'm just going to cut another piece and layer that right over there, you're not even going to be able to see it. <clears throat> like see that it didn't just belong there. Because this paper is pretty whimsical with lots of beginnings and ends to the stripes. So I think that that will look, it will look like it belongs in the end. Ooh, I really like that. And then I realized that my stripes were competing with each other, so I had to turn it the other way. And meaning like my background stripes were vertical and they should have been horizontal. And then I realized that my paper was not centered. I thought this happened. I couldn't remember exactly. It's been a week since I did this page. And so then I put it back on and oh, I put it back on wrong again. Maybe I'm being a little bit too... I don't know, detail oriented here, but I'm pleased with this one. So that floral does seem to have an up to me and a down. Some florals don't, but this one, it seems like most of the stems are pointing one way. So I did want it to go that way. <clears throat> I'm going to use liquid glue to glue this glitter layer onto my photo because glitter is very textured and sometimes dry adhesive doesn't stick as well. So I just used my Art Glitter Dries clear glue for that. And now look at this beautiful paper. I am using my Sakura One pen. So it's, it's 1.0 is the thickness of this. And it is a, it's not a Pixma pen. I just checked it and it looks like it's a Pigma Micron pen, but it's not. It's a Pigma Graphic One uh, because I don't think that the Pigma pens come that that broad and it's nice and bold compared to some of the, the smaller lines that I usually draw with. So it gives that paper just a little bit more presence. That paper is pretty, pretty prominent and I just wanted to make sure that it had its its presence there on the page. I love outlining papers on my pages, as you know. I did take a few minutes just to think about where that was lining up with other things. This little designer strip had just a smidgen of the paper still attached to it, so I cut that down. And I think I'm gonna layer this piece right here. Well, for now, I'm gonna think that, but now I keep thinking, you know what? I think I might like it better over here. It seemed like it was distracting there. So I'll, I'm going to tuck it in here and another piece in here. But you know what? I'm going to tuck them in so tiny that just a little tiny smidgen is going to show. And it's going to look like black and white squares along the edges, along the edge of the photo. And I just love the subtle boldness. It's like an oxymoron, right? Subtle boldness, but that's what it gives, right? It's bold, but this is just a little hint of it. I love it. 
Now, I have pre-written my journaling, the monthly newsletter that comes with the main kit from Mercy Terra Kits. It always has a space for journaling, for, for substantial journaling. So I went ahead and wrote my journaling already. And I know I have a very, because I already wrote it, I know that it's going to take up quite a bit of space. Now, I'm thinking about about titles and I don't want to use the letters that come in this kit. This kit comes with some beautiful gold letters, but I don't know that I want to use those. These blue pink fresh stickers from a previous kit, I think it's from the Brighter Days kit. Those blue stickers, ooh, I really like those. But ultimately I decided that because I want the title to be Hello City and I just have an idea of how I want this layout to be kind of like not too formal and a little bit casual, these letter stickers look a little bit like uh, marker letters, like you've drawn it on it with markers. And so I like that hand drawn look that these letter stickers give me. I'm using a piece of wax paper to spell out Hello City. And Hello City is a song. It's a not one of their most popular songs, but it's a song by Bare Naked Ladies. And I was listening to them a lot um, in in the years that I'm thinking of when I look at this photo. And it's also the word, the, the song is actually about Halifax, which is my city, so and the city of the photo. So Hello City really works well in lots of different ways. It's a photo of the city, it happens to be Halifax, and it's also uh, from a song from the phase of life that I am talking about. <clears throat> And although I wasn't originally planning to do this, I just happened to put these letter stickers on layered over top of the photo with my wax paper. And I liked the look of it so much that I just decided to leave it there. This isn't my own photo, so I don't really care what I cover up. It's covering up the church steeple there, but that's okay. I don't care. You can still see most of that building. And I mean, really what this photo is going for is more of the vibe than anything specific in the photo. I don't know exactly what street that is. I know it looks like any of dozens of streets I would have walked down a million times. And uh, that's exactly what I like about this photo is how kind of generic it is. But as soon as I looked at it, I knew it was Halifax. And sure enough, it was. I think I don't remember where I got it. It was on the internet someplace. So, um, yeah, so let's talk about that journaling. So as I said, I have a lot of journaling to document. It's all written there in the journaling space on my newsletter. But I'm so I'm, I'm kind of using that white card there as a placeholder for the journaling. And I'm thinking maybe the journaling will go on the background paper right here where the white card is. And then this camera is a little cut apart that I grabbed from one of those April and Ivy papers, one of the ones with the cut aparts on it. And I chose it because I thought I was doing a monochromatic page at the beginning, right? And so there's that. And then I cut off the little memories and I think that that looks nice just hanging out from behind my main layers as well. And it adds another touch of some of the colors that show up in that lined colorful paper that I have the kind of like the chunky um, pieces out of. So I grabbed, I went into my stash and grabbed a couple of different flare badges that I might wanna put in the center of my camera. Put, now, I chose that bicycle, that tricycle, because there actually is a Bare Naked Ladies album with a, an old man on a tricycle. And so tricycles always remind me of the Bare Naked Ladies, but I didn't, it's not this album from Hello City, and I just, I didn't want to use that one. So I ended up picking Real Life because that fits with my journaling. And I love putting flare badges in the centers of cameras. It's one of my favorite ways to use cameras and one of my favorite ways to use flare badges. I also realized that I have a lot of these bows. See that little um, turquoise or mint green bow that's on the camera? I have a lot of those. So I thought, geez, I better use those. The, the, that is a very old Amy Tangerine. It's like a little leatherette faux bow It's or faux leatherette bow. It's really, really cute. I want to put the alarm clock on there because it reminds me of time and this is a layout from my past and also from Liv's current. So it's sort of like talking about me and talking about her in the same story. 
I grabbed my clear sticker paper from Avery. I've had this stuff for so long. I love using it for journaling because you can stick it onto patterned paper and you can still see the pattern behind, but you can still see the, the journaling quite easily. So I really love it. It's from Avery and I went to reorder it and I couldn't find exactly the same kind. So I'm going to have to research where to find it again, or maybe, I don't know, maybe I just wasn't looking carefully enough, but here's what I do with my journaling. So I keep a pages, so I'm, I use Mac. So I have a pages document that is already set to four by six. I have another one that's set to three by four so that I can use it for project life. But this one is my four by six one. I also keep these four by six cards on hand. So I printed my journaling on the four by six card. I'm just taking a break here because I needed to reprint and I thought I'd leave this footage in. I usually cut out my breaks in my process videos, but I just wanted you to see that I had to take a break so that I could reprint that journaling because I printed it once on one of those four by six cards just to see where it's going to land. And then I do want my journaling to hug around the edge of that alarm clock. So I just looked at the at it and used like the tabs and the return button to switch the journaling so that it would fall where I wanted it to behind behind the alarm clock. And now what I'm looking at here is just the Y in the word young, which is the last uh, on the last line, is just a little bit too far behind my alarm clock. So I'm printing it out again. This time I'm pretty sure it's the right. So I just pressed that like a, a space button maybe once or twice to scooch over the word young so that it all ends a little bit further over. And this is, look... Look at that, it fits perfectly. Whereas with this one, the Y was behind the alarm clock. So printing it up a couple of times like that is worthwhile because it just, I don't know, I, I just love it when things hug each other. I'm just a huggy lovey kind of person and I love it when my embellishments <laughs> hug right up to my journaling, that's so nice. So the journaling there says, this photo which I found on the internet reminds me of my undergraduate days. Walking on the unshoveled, oh, it says unshelled. Oops, I meant unshoveled walks in the snow. Hearing the tick, tick, tick of snowflakes hitting my far west jacket and the cold sloppy gray slush I'd encounter at every sidewalk. All the bare naked, all while the bare naked ladies Gordon album played in the wired headphones of my disc man. Those were the days. It blows my mind that lives life, that this is lives life now. I love Halifax and I'm so happy that she gets to experience downtown Halifax city life at a young age, just as I did. <clears throat> so... A few things that I put into my journaling purposely, some of the details like what album it was, that I was using wired headphones, that I wore a Far West jacket. These are little details about like snapshots of life in the early 90s that I wanted to include in my journaling without saying these are the things we did in the 90s. So embedding those sorts of details into my journaling helps my story feel more rich, but it also gives me more of that nostalgic feel. <clears throat> you saw me pull out some die cuts there. Those are die cuts that came with the Celebrate kit. It's from April and Ivy. And I grabbed the edge of this and I wanted to include this border punch because of the school element. Uh, going to university and it set a perfect day and I punched it and I knew when I punched it that it would end up Oh, I lost it. Look at me. I'm looking for it. Where did it go? Oh, I put it in the garbage. <laughs> oh, go figure. It's not the first time I put something in the garbage that I was working with. So luckily I found it this time. So I knew when I punched it that it would actually punch through some of the phrase, a perfect day. And that I like that because it's actually an imperfect day. I mean, look at it. It's sloppy and gross and yucky. It's not at all a perfect day. Uh, but yet... It kind of is, right? So that's kind of the idea that I was going for. And maybe not everybody who looks at my layout is going to think that deeply about it, but I have fun with that using that kind of imagery. And that's what scrapbooking is all about for me is kind of like having fun with imagery and symbolism and all that kind of stuff. So I put documented there. 
it's another chipboard piece and it gives my alarm clock just a little bit of a of a home right like a place for it to stand so I tore off the bottom edge of memory so that it could have a torn edge that I could then pull up to give myself a little bit more dimension and texture down here but I didn't like the look of the white ripped edge so I just took I think it might have been frayed burlap that I took in Distress Ink, any just like soft brownie beigey color would be fine. And uh, just took away from the white torn edges. The white torn edges, there's nothing wrong with white torn edges. There is plenty of white on this page, so it's not a problem. But that was just a detail I wanted to do. I am going to attach my flare badge. I just had to go get some dimensional adhesive because this is one of those concave flare badges. And I didn't have any of these thin dimensional adhesives in my little stash that I keep on hand so I had to go get some extras. I'm also going to pop up the whole camera that I fussy cut and that's going to stand up from the page as well and cast a nice little shadow around the outside edges of it. And here's where I'm thinking, hang on a second, let's go with pink. I've got pink up at the top, there's pink in the M and let's add some more pink and hold that thought because at the very end, I'm going to, when you see the photos, you'll see that there's more pink and I do a few extra things more than usual. So I'm going to actually talk you through that at the end when, when you see it. Now, every month, the main kit almost always comes with, well, always so far, it has come with a set of confetti mix. And I love these confetti mixes. They're great. They're a great way to sprinkle a little bit of, of sparkly goodness around your page. So I am actually putting some right on the photo. And I'm also putting some in these three corners where my, embe my embellishment clusters are. Well, there's no embellishment cluster in one of those places yet, but it'll, it'll become an embellishment cluster soon enough. Now, this particular mix has black, blues, whites and pinks and also it has some silver stars and some blue not stars some silver snowflakes and some blue snowflakes and so I went ahead and left the blacks in even though they are fairly bold and don't give you a snowy look I still just really like them there's plenty of black on this page I matted the whole thing in black the photo is matted in black and so these are not necessarily meant to look like snow falling per se, although there are some snowflakes in there. I will get to the snow in shortly. You'll see. You'll see me add something that does represent the snow. I'm using my I'm using my Art Glitter Dries Clear Glue with the metal tip on it, and I'm also using my pickup stick from We Are Memory Keepers. I love that thing. Changes it's a game changer for sequins and confetti mix. And <clears throat> I wish I attached the, the snowflakes differently, I will tell you. So I just kind of plopped some glue down and then plopped the star, the snowflakes in the glue. And I wish I had taken the time to just pick up the star, hold it in my hand and put a little bit of glue on the star. Cause I don't love how the glue goes through the hole in the center of the, I'm calling it a star. It's a snowflake. <laughs> But anyhow, I did what I did and I'm looking at the page right now and I can't even see it. So maybe it doesn't matter. But at the time I was regretting it because as the glue oozed through the centers of those snowflakes, I was not too pleased with it, but I can't even see it now. I mean, the glue is called Art Glitter Dries Clear Glue. So obviously it dries clear and uh, yeah, it looks pretty okay. So the only thing is that those star, those snowflakes are pretty reflective, especially the silver ones and the places where there was glue on it. I did have to scrape it off so that the snowflake would still be reflective. So I am thinking that I would like to put a little bit more imagery here. I put that little stack of books up at the top there. These are all pieces of chipboard from the from the Simple Stories chipboard that came in the kit. And this roller date stamp, again, anything to do with time, I like for a, one of these flashback nostalgic type of pages. I decided to add that paper clip there or binder clip because it reminds me, it adds pink there, but also it's it's a school supply. I used to hold my projects together with that before they were finished. 
with those kinds of things. And then I thought this book, this pile of books could use some string. And that way it looks more like a bunch of books that you're going to carry someplace. Come on, I'm not that old. I didn't go to school in the days when we tied our books together and carried them like that. But uh, it still is really cute. <laughs> So it adds some texture to my page and I'm just going to put a little dimensional adhesive on either side of the string so that that little piece of chipboard will lie flat. Put it, pushing the whole thing behind that border punch with the notebook paper edging on it. And then I'll also use a little dimensional adhesive and a half right here on the binder clip and stick the binder clip right in there. So this is my third cluster. So I've got the cluster with the camera and now also a roller date stamp. Then we've got a cluster up here with the books and a cluster with the alarm clock. Those are my three clusters. Now I'm going to add some snow to this page. This is Windsor and Newton gouache in white zinc white and this is what I use for my white splatter these days I really love this I love it because it's a paint so it it's like an acrylic paint so it dries like a paint does instead of most of my white mists dry powdery or they never really completely dry and they're just really messy and chalky to work with whereas this dries quickly and just like paint so because it is paint I add some water to make it super thin so that it will splatter, but it still dries as paint. So I, as you can see, using the fan brush means that, oops, I, um, <laughs> I accident, I think that my brush was not clean, but I didn't care. I was like, well, there's a little bit of pink in this brush, but it's okay. You're not going to see it in the splatter. So the fan brush gives really really fine splatter so I used a round brush to get slightly bigger splats on my page and I put those splatters in the three different places and I'm just using a baby wipe wrapped around the end of my of my paintbrush to get some of the splatter marks off of especially the black sequins but it dried so quickly that I couldn't get it off of some of them and that's okay it doesn't matter adding a little bit more splatter and now I think it's done so I'm going to show you the details but stay tuned because I'm going to talk about what I added and you will see pictures of what I added and see if you can guess where I added things <laughs> uh, anyhow before I do that I would like to talk about my patrons so you'll see a list of my patrons in a few minutes, and I wanted to give a quick shout out to them because they help make this channel happen. So big thanks to all of them. Patrons get early ad-free access to all of my process videos and real-time unedited versions of my videos, as well as a monthly live stream, some behind the scenes videos, some extra process videos, and uh, thank you as well. But here is the layout with a few changes. Can you see them? I added two more of those bows there's the one that I had added already and look behind that camera there's a little sliver of pink there too then there's pink up here in this corner and another pink bow that you can see off to the side there in this corner right there below the books and what that did was I noticed that there just there wasn't pink in all of my clusters so that provides some repetition and unity to my page so that there's pink in each corner and it, both the dark pink and the light pink bow in each of those corners which I think just helps the page feel a little bit more pulled together. So thank you so much for watching this video. Here are a few of the places that you can check me out. Please leave me a comment below and let me know if you ever do these kinds of layouts where the photo isn't even yours, it's just like some random thing that sparked a memory. Let me know if you've ever scrapbooked something like that because I'd love to hear about it. Take care and have a really great scrappy week.